Hi everybody, Unlucky Artist here and welcome to the ultimate guide to Stoneward Endurance. Stand and fight, you know what's right, defeat the evil and save the world tonight. So in this guide I'm going to cover all things Stoneward Endurance, including firstly a kind of broader note on how you use the guide, secondly the rewards that you get from Stonewood Endurance. Thirdly, um, naming the amps so that the map and everything makes sense. Fourthly, we'll look at the order of attack and notable waves. Fifthly, I'll talk about my building and trapping principles that I use for Stonewood Endurance. And then I'll finish by giving you a quick tour of my base and the spawns that are in my base. Now, what's not covered in this video, because otherwise it would just be way too long, um, but I will cover in future videos, is a video on each spawn in terms of the exact tiles that I've built and trapped and so on. Um, a full run through of the endurance where you can see every single wave. Um, and finally, a more detailed guide for um, players who are much lower level and who don't have the same traps and perks as I'm showing you in this video. So first of all, how should you be using this guide? Well, it really depends on what you're looking to get out of Stonewood Endurance. So it could be that you're just interested in doing Stonewood Endurance to get this banner and to have it done, you wanna do it once and never again. And that is uh, completely fair enough. Lots of people play that way. But if that's the case, you probably don't need to go into the full detail of this guide because um, in all honesty, if you're in a squad, you can gun Stonewood Endurance or even if you're playing solo and you're uh, in Twine, then if you bring along this player, Thunder Thora, you put down some floors, um, you funnel the husks so they walk over those floors, that will kill the majority of husks. So you might want to check out the sections about the amp naming and map and the ordering just so that you're kind of aware of what's coming and use the spreadsheet as you go through to check. But apart from that, you don't need to do a ton of building and trapping if you just want to play Stonewood once. However, Perhaps um, you're a lower level player or perhaps you want to set up your Stonewood Endurance Base as a resource farm. Um, Stonewood is a really good resource farm for particular resources. Um, and in that case, if you want to set up an AFK base, you do need to go into a lot more depth in terms of the, the spawns and the block offs and the traps and that kind of thing. So probably you won't want to watch through the whole video. And with that in mind, let's look now at what the rewards are for doing Stonewood Endurance. I'm gonna start on the right hand side of this infographic because that is really where the value of Stonewood Endurance lies. It is the most consistent way in the entire game to get rare perk up. So if rare perk up is a resource you struggle with, then I'd really advise setting up an AFK Stonewood Endurance base because it gives you rare perk up every single time. It also gives you re-perk every time. It also gives you gold every time. And it also gives you battle pass XP every time. And you will get on top of that one of the three types of XP, either survivor or hero or schematic XP. So you get a decent amount of rewards um, for doing any level of the endurance. And let's have a look at the exact numbers now on the spreadsheet, which is linked uh, in the description below the video. So uh, this is a spreadsheet that I've put together um, by going through endurance and failing at every single wave to find out what the rewards are there. So you can see that um, you will either get Survivor XP or you'll get Hero or Schematic XP. And the ratio at which you get them is uh, three to two. So you'll see that essentially, if you failed on wave one, you would either get 260 Survivor XP or you'd get 175 Hero or 175 Schematic. You don't get all three sadly and um, you also get the battle pass in the chest if you have stonewood endurance as your daily you'll get um the battle pass rewards for hitting 5 10 15 and so on you get gold every time you'll get re-perk every time you'll get rare perk up every time and you will get the danger in the mist quest every time as long as you make it to wave 10 and beyond um, so overall, that ends up being an awful lot of resources. And if we go all the way down to wave 30, you'll see that you're, you're getting over 100,000 survivor XP. Um, you're, you're hitting the daily cap for the battle pass XP. At the moment, it's 280,000. 
So if you run one Stonewood AFK Endurance and you make it to wave 30, you will hit your daily battle pass cap. You're getting 755 gold and um, you're getting 420 reperk and you're getting 259 rare perk up. So to put it in context, every perk you level up to, to blue costs you 150. So that's going to get you one and a half perks every time. It takes about an hour and a half to run. If you set up your base AFK, and you're going in and out all day. You could run, I don't know, 10 of those maybe. And that would allow you to level up um, almost two traps or weapons up to blue with that. So it's a really good amount of rare perk up and a really good amount of the other resources too. Um, and of course, if you um, bring in a constructor and again, you're kind of paying a little bit of attention, you can place your base with recycling on it and you can gather wood, brick and stone really easily as well. So you can resource farm that way. Husks drop stuff, particularly ammo, mechanical parts um, and things like that. So again, you can get resources from husk deaths as well. So we're back in my storm shield now to talk about amps. Now, everybody in Stonewood will have the same three amps placed as A, B and C, but they might not be in exactly the same order, by which I mean that your, that my amp A might be your amp B, for example, my amp B might be your amp C, my amp C might be your amp A, and so on, right? We'll all have the same A, B and C overall but they might not be the same letters. So for this reason, I've given the amps names. And you can see that um, from my home base here, we have to go down a little dip to get to A. And so I've called this amp here, directly south of the home base, I've called it the dip amp. Then we go down even further to get to amp B. In fact, it's two tiles down from the home base and it's southwest of the home base and this is uh, I've called the drop amp because it's a drop down from the home base. And then finally over here we have the third um, amp, uh, my amp C, and it is directly west of the home base and I've called it the west side amp. So we can see in uh, this map here, my A is the dip amp, my B is the drop amp, my C is the west side amp. Um, and as I said, those three amps everybody will have placed because of the way that the game forces you to play amps, place amps. Now, uh, what we will differ on is what we have placed for the fourth amp D. You can see from here that my amp D is up on uh, the top southeast of the map. Um, and um, I'm just going to quickly run over to it now. So here, as you can see, I've had to go up quite an incline to get uh, to this place and Amp D is on a hill, so I've called it the D hill. But you might not have the D hill placed, you might have placed this Amp here as your Amp D. And this is the D field, it is south south of the home base. And then the third option for Amp D is right down here beside this mine. You can see the mine um, over here and indeed the spawns come from the mine and so I've called this the D mine. So there are three options for D, D hill, D field, D mine and you will only have one of those placed and it might be a different one from me. Um, uh, but what that means is because we all have the same three amps placed uh, and we've all placed them in the same order and then we will all have a fourth amp placed for D that's furthest away from the home base. That means that the attack order in Stonewood is identical for every player. Um, and let's have a look at that attack order now. If we look here at this amp column, you can see that the waves are attacked in a systematic order. Um, and actually, for those of you who are interested, that order is, I believe, based on the distance of each amp from the home base. That is why no matter what order we placed our A, B and C in, they'll always be attacked in this particular way, because the west side is the closest amp to the home base, followed by the dip, followed by the drop, and finally amp D is always going to be the furthest away. Um, so you can see it kind of progresses in this manner um, with a few random waves thrown in, and this is where your amp, any of them could be attacked, including your home base. Um, and as a side note, some people have 
commented that they find their home base is never attacked after wave one, but I personally always have my home base attacked often on 21, which is a random wave, but I've had it on 16 as well. So my home base will every single run I do either be attacked on 16 or 21. So, um, as I said, other people have not had that. So I don't know if there's, uh, some, something else that's at play there, but just be prepared for your home base to have, I would say two attacks. Um, so th we then follow the pattern again, west side dip drop, and you can see that D isn't included in this particular one, and, and that kind of continues throughout. Sometimes D is included, sometimes it's not, and that is because D gets hit by um, all of the hardest modifiers. So overall, it has fewer attacks, but those attacks are really difficult. So we have in wave 15 safety zone, um, which is one of the war games modifiers where you have four mini storm shields that you need to defend and everywhere else is in the storm. It then has torn apart, which is the tornado that runs through your base and it, it in particular, it, um, it destroys traps, that tornado, which is really annoying. And um, we have hot spots. That's where it, um, the lava literally blows up tiles. So, um, the hot, you know, your walls and your floors and everything will disappear. And then on the final wave, D has mist pods, which is where if you don't kill those mist pods, then you will have mini bosses spawn. And it, ad additional to that, it has other mini bosses as well. So D gets beat up pretty bad. And almost always my D and all its tunnels are completely trashed by the end of a run, but it's still possible to AFK an entire endurance, even with D getting hit like this. And when we talk about building and trapping, and when I go into more detail in the videos about D itself, then I will talk about what I do to counteract all of those tricky modifiers. But it's just something to be aware of at this point. So um, as you can see, you can follow the pattern down. Um, and uh, I uh, it, there is also the denied modifier that's on the drop amp. Denied is really, it doesn't matter at all, especially if you're AFKing. It's, um, it's where you get damage if you're too close to certain builds. Um, but as I said, if you're AFKing, you're not there anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference. We do have the epic mini boss on a random wave, so that's something to watch out for. It could attack any amp. Um, and again, when it comes to the, the trapping part, I'll talk about how I counteract that. Um, but apart from that, uh, there's not really anything of note. There are, there's a taker wave. Um, it doesn't really make a difference if you're AFKing. There's um, there's a smasher wave and so on. But you know, all in all, um, the the enemies are not too difficult in Stonewood. There are a few elemental waves, but literally you get I don't know out of thirty husks that spawn at once, maybe two or three of them are fire husks. So I think it's not even really an elemental wave to be honest. Um, and as you can see, the PL for the husks it only goes up to level thirty three. So really, um, an epic of reduced this actually. It used to be almost double that. And I think the reason they've done it is because they want people who are in Plankerton to be able to do Stonewood Endurance, which I think is a great thing. And, um, you know, I've made this video very much thinking you might be in Plankerton or early canny and you might be interested in doing Stonewood Endurance and you totally would be able to if that's you in that situation. Um, so just going to uh, put up the map now uh, my map of Endurance, which summarizes all of that, all the amp names, all the amp uh, waves, what waves each amp is hit on and what the particular modifiers are using the legend on the side. Um, and I will of course link to that map in the description below as well as linking to this spreadsheet. So let's talk now about building and trapping in Stonewood Endurance. Um, in some future videos I'll do kind of a tile by tile uh, about my build and my traps but in this video, I'm just going to give you an overview of the general principles that I follow when I'm building and also kind of a, an overview of the traps and so on. So first of all, building principles um, that I find really useful for Stonewood. The first thing is don't use too many block offs. And by that, I mean there are maybe four or five different ways to for husks to get from their spawns to the amplifier. Um, I find particularly for a 30 wave AFK Stonewood Endurance that um, keeping as many uh, pathways as possible for the husks uh, is better, it's easier for structure count um, and also it saves you a lot on trap durability which I'll talk about later but you know here's an example um, of the dip amp east spawn which everybody has 
and you can see that the husks kind of spawn all the way across here and actually I have multiple different pathways into my tunnels so they can come from the far left, they can come over the top, they can come, the majority of them come from this main part here and then a few of them will come around the side and I've done a pathway for them up there. I did experiment having different block offs for this. I had the far left pathway blocked, I had the far right pathway blocked. Only husks would simply just bash through and also it just used far more structures than actually putting a few traps in. Um, so uh, overall I think the principle is kind of add traps rather than block offs. Uh, the second principle is use the natural terrain to your advantage. The majority of spawns in Stonewood, they um, come from below the amp and so the husks are walking uphill use drop traps use launchers to push them back down and um, kind of benefit from that natural aid in your trapping so here is an example on the drop amp west spawn again everybody has this spawn no matter where your de-amp is placed um, and you can see that basically the husks come up this hill and then they get pushed back down by my drop traps and then even the ones that make it up to the top they are still getting hit by a launcher which pushes them back down and then you know the few fat ones that make it through like big huskies or smashers then they are getting hit by damage traps at the end but primarily I'm using a more a recycling approach to um, to slow down the husks and what that means is you have to use far fewer damage traps because you're just constantly recycling the husks back. The third building principle is how you deal with flingers and lobbers. Uh, now I know people who prefer to rely on anti-air traps for flingers and lobbers but I personally don't like that. I find it a less safe approach, riskier. Um, so I build a shield and that shield should be nine tiles from the edge of your amp. So here I'm at the home base and you can see I'm going out nine tiles and I've built a, a ceiling to go all the way down across there at the nine tiles. And what that means is flinger spawn, they just walk into my tunnels. They will only throw if there is a gap. Um, and if there's not a gap, they'll just go and get killed by the traps. Lobbers. The AI for lobbers has changed in the last year or so. Uh, so in fact, guides that you read from maybe a year ago won't be totally relevant in 2023 because what lobbers do now is they throw within four or five tiles of the objective. But um, if your objective is not covered, if it's not built around, then they will throw at your tunnels. So for this reason, all of my amps are built around in endurance. I, <laughs> I tried a naked amp approach, which you see a lot of YouTubers using, but in 2023, that doesn't work. The lobbers were just destroying my tunnels um, and uh, it was super problematic and I tried all sorts of things to counteract it and eventually somebody said, why don't you just try building around your amps? And I did and it completely stopped them. So. Um, if you build around your amps, the lobbers will just walk into your tunnels, same as the flingers. But if you don't build around your amps, if you go for a naked amp, then they will throw at your tunnels and that can be quite problematic. So that's building. Now let's think about traps. Ideally for Stonewood Endurance, you should be using tier three legendary traps. And ideally you should have at least blue perks on those traps. Now, um, two caveats to that. The first is I know that the husks in Stonewood are only a tier one level basically, but the advantage of tier three legendary traps is that you get six perks on them. Um, if you only use tier two legendary, there's only five perks. Tier one legendary only have two perks. And if you use a purple or a blue variant, then you're decreasing the number of perks still. So tier three legendary enables you to use trap perks to their max. Um, and that helps particularly with durability, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, and the second caveat is that I appreciate some of you might not have all legendary or all tier three or all blue perks on your traps. So as I said, that's the ideal, but you can definitely do stonewood uh, without those things. Um, you just might have to make some adjustments to how you build accordingly. And I will make a separate video about that um, in a bit more detail. 
So, uh, with that in mind, what traps should you have for endurance? Now, of course, there's lots of legitimate ways to build and trap, but this is just what I do. I've categorized my traps into three categories, uh, essential, useful, and nice to have. And this is specifically for snowman endurance rather than the whole game of Save the World. Um, but thinking about the essential traps first, there are four traps uh, that I think are essential for snowman endurance, and they are the ceiling drop trap, the wall launcher, the wooden floor spikes, and the uh, sound wall. And if you have all four of those traps at tier three, then um, you can definitely do the entirety of endurance just with those four because they really maximize the terrain um, and doing damage to husks on that terrain. Um, the second group of traps are useful. So if you do have them, great, but if you don't, you know, maybe work on getting one or two. And they are the ceiling electric, the ceiling gas, the wall darts and the tar trap. And then finally, uh, the third group, nice to have. And what you'll see when you look around my endurance is that I use these occasionally, but not all that much. Um, the wooden, wo wooden wall spikes, the uh, anti-air trap, which actually I have a few of those down, but I never need them. Um, the uh, wall dynamos and broadsides. So, um, you know, in terms of priorities, if you're somebody who's kind of thinking, oh, I, I don't have all of these, then I'd prioritize leveling up the ones on the left and kind of moving towards the right. So here are the perks that I use for my traps. And what I would say is the vast majority of traps, I'd recommend using what I call the classic damage perk combination. That is where you have one damage perk, one crit rating perk, one crit damage perk, one reload perk, one durability perk, and then one of whatever the element is. You don't often get a choice in that. And um, this is like a good all round generic perk combo for really quite a lot of things in Save the World. Um, some uh, the wall traps, launchers and side walls, typically people run three times impact, two times reload, uh, one times durability. Um, and then with tar traps, we run five times durability, really whatever the situation. Uh, some traps you might, on the, you see on the right hand side, classic damage without durability and instead with sixth perk heals. So that would be like a wooden wall spike, which you might put on a block off. So then the husk hits the block off, gets killed by the trap, and then the block off heals itself basically before another husk comes to it. And I also use the dynamos around my amps to kill the mini bosses um, and with that same perk combo. Uh, now, anti-airs. I said earlier, I don't really need any anti-airs with my build because I just build a lobber shield. But what you should be aware of is that the classic anti-air perk combo, two times range, two times reload, Jura and heals. That works really well for lobbers and lobber skulls, but it doesn't work for flingers. It just doesn't do any damage or enough damage to the husks the flingers throw. If you want your anti-airs to target flinger husks, you need to perk them four times damage, basically. Um, so I do have a few anti-airs on my base. I've got the four times damage ones on my amps. Um, and then I've got the um, the regular reload range ones um, around the edges, just in case of a lobber uh, attack, basically. But as I said, I, I don't need anti-airs in my build. Um, so they never really get used. Now, uh, these are kind of the recommended perks, but one change you might want to make is, depending on what your trap durability is as a player, you might want to add some durability perks onto the traps, or you might want to, if you don't need it, remove durability perks from the traps. So let's talk a bit more about trap durability because that's a really important concept to understand for endurance. And it's really just referring to the number of uses your trap has before it runs out. Um, and it'll be based on a statistic that you have as a player. You can see on this screen, these are my stats. My trap durability um, is 344% for my endurance loadout, uh, which is the maximum you can get. And that statistic is based um, on two things. It's first of all based on my survivor squad, um, and the number of trap durability matches that I have in it. So I have the highest number of matches. For every pair you match, you get an extra 8% up to a maximum of 192%. And plus, that's on top of the base 100%. And then um, Machinist Harper as a main or Machinist Mina, um, they give you plus 52.5% trap durability as as their commander perk. If you have them in the support squad, you get some extra trap durability, but not uh, not as much as 50. I think it's something like 17 and a half or something like that. 
Um, so, and that's where the 344% comes from, 100% base plus 192 plus 52.5. Um, that's then um, presumably rounded down actually. And um, to, to boost your durability even further, you then add perks to your traps themselves and that adds 42% uh, per gold perk. Um, and that's on the base durability of a trap. So if you want to find the base durability of a trap, then you can go and look at look on the internet on like a Fortnite wiki page and it'll tell you for each one. The statistic that's here, uh, 64, on that screenshot of the wall darts, that is um, plus uh, one durability perk, uh, which adds that 42%. I think the base um durability for wall darts is 45 um and so but but this number it takes into account how i've perked that trap it doesn't take into account my survivor squads or machinist harper being in my main just to confuse you um even though this is a screenshot from my save the world game so uh this would be um the durability i get if i took uh, if i crafted that trap in ventures uh where survivor squads don't count and i wasn't maining machinist um i would get a a durability of um, 64 with that extra gold perk and if I didn't have that gold perk I would get a durability of 45 for that trap. So all of that to say probably if you're watching this video um, you are you don't have maximum trap durability um, and therefore your trap durability is, isn't near that 344 percent mark. It's probably let's say maybe 200% um, with Machinist. And so it might be that you want to think about um, obviously building up your survivor squads as a long-term project. As a side note, trap durability is the only survivor bonus that's worth collecting at the moment in the game. Um, but additionally, what you might want to do is, depending on uh, uh, how your traps are perked, you might want to switch out one of your damage perks for an extra durability perk. Um, because if your traps are crafted at tier three, you don't need extra damage. The husks are way lower level than those traps that you've crafted. Um, but you most likely will need the extra durability to see you through 30 waves of endurance. So uh, final part of the video, um, although admittedly quite a long part, which is we're going to look at the various spawns and amp approaches. Um, now, not all of these will apply to you because depending on where you've placed Amp D, they might be different, but we'll talk through each of them and you can use the menu below as well to um, navigate to the ones that are relevant to you. What I would say um, before we get started is that the spawns do shift in Stonewood, so sometimes they will start in a particular place and other times they might start a little bit left of that, a little bit right of that. So I'll point that out as we go along, but just be aware that it's not enough just to watch um, an approach once and know exactly where the spawns are. The next time the amp gets attacked on that same approach, the spawns might be in a slightly different place. you just got to prepare for that. So let's start with the four spawns that everybody has. Um, and the first of these is the home base, east. So I'm standing here now in the central point where the husks will spawn. As I mentioned before, the spawns shift. So sometimes they'll start all the way over here. Um, and other times they'll sort of start around here. And they tend to go to round about here. Um, and as you can see, I actually only have one area blocked off, which is this pathway up here. Um, and typically, I don't really get many husks spawning down this way. So this block off is more than sufficient. There's about four uh, four bits that they have to bash through here. But apart from that, they'll walk up the hill here. You can see I've got a drop trap where they walk up. They'll walk up the hill here. Again, another drop trap. And a very few of them will come up this way. Um, again, I used to have block offs here, quite elaborate block offs, but in all honesty, you don't need them. There's so few husks that come up this way that these traps here really easily. Um, kill them. So basically my my tunnels come to two kind of pathways in, this one on my left and this one over here. Um, and as you can see with my traps, and I'm maining Machinist Harper, so we have pretty decent durability. Um, I barely get a single husk that would go, come through to here, maybe a smasher if it was a later wave. So, um, you know, th this is overkill for me. Um, but I don't really have that many traps at all, basically two layers worth of traps. 
And as is the case with quite a lot of my tunnels, I start off with sound walls to get the propanes to drop. I use these wooden floor spikes. They slow the husks down by 15% and that effect lasts for two tiles. Um, and I combine it with launchers to throw them back and ceiling electrics at the beginning. I put ceiling electrics at the beginning of my tunnels because ceiling electrics will do damage in a three by three tile radius. So that means if they're triggered by a husk standing here, they will do damage to a husk that's here and that's here and that's here and here. So they have a nice radius. They're great for the entrances of tunnels. Then the later and bits are really for smashers with the gas traps um, doing damage to them and wall darts kind of all over the place as well. Um, and you can see it's exactly the same principle here. We've got a sound wall at the beginning and then there's launchers throwing the husks back and um, seeding electrics at the beginning and uh, gas traps at the end. And that's basically my tunnel strategy that's going to be repeated in a few different places. So that is the home base east spawn. It gets attacked on wave one and after that, in my experience, it generally gets attacked once across the whole rest of the run. Um, now, of course, the one time I decided to record my run for the video that I'm putting on my channel, it didn't get attacked a second time in that. So normally it does get attacked twice, but often, you know, you might find that it's only once. Uh, let's move on to the second spawn that's shared by everybody, and that is Dip Amp East. So I'm here. The Dip Amp is directly ahead of me. You can't see it on the map but you can see it there it's my amp a so the majority of husks spawn round about here for the dip amp but you will sometimes get husks that spawn all the way over here some spawn up on top here um, some spawn here and um, some a very few will spawn up here sometimes and that is why I have this lobber shield that's angled rather than um, just level because you kind of need to counteract the fact that some of the husks will spawn up here and sometimes as well you'll get spawns behind here and so on. So basically um, I've got one pathway that comes here um, and mostly kind of drop traps really I, um, I experimented a huge amount with different aspects of this spawn, but and I blocked this off, but actually sometimes you'll just get blasters who are really insistent and just break through everything. So it's easier just to trap it in my experience rather than having tons and tons of block offs. I also experimented putting like uh, pathways up here to see if that helps, but really not many husks walked up it. The majority of husks come through this bit here. Um, and and then we'll walk down here um, and then a few husks will come round the side here depending on where the spawns are sometimes if they don't have a little tendril up here or or down there then they won't come around this side at all but um, you'll get a few coming around the side and then you'll get some that walk this way and just walk into the tunnels this way so basically my tunnel has loads of entrances I'm trying to use drop traps as much as I can um, Actually, I don't know why I've used it there because it's only two tiles high and not pushing them back down a hill. But, you know, um, nothing's perfect, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that is the uh, Dip Amp East spawn. Um, and this does get hit quite a number of times. And potentially, if you've placed the field amp, it will get hit loads and loads of times. Um, so I'm just going to go across now to the other side where, on the west side, where we have two spawns that again are shared by everybody. So this is the um, the west side amp and this is the west spawn. It's the only spawn of the west side amp. Um, this is an interesting build because actually, um, if you remember when I talked about my uh, lobber problem when I had a naked amp and the only build that I managed to counteract the lobber problem without having uh, lobbers throwing at tunnels at all and without building around my amp was this build here on my side. The placement of everything and the drops and so on, um, essentially what I did was I baited them to this tile because I noticed that they kept throwing to destroy all the builds around here. So I, I kept this bit open, you can see it has no ceilings, to bait them up into it to throw from here and it just seems to work. They, ne they never throw it at the tunnels even when I had a naked amp, but 
Um, so I just left this build, it's kind of fun anyway. As you can see, there are three pathways. Technically there's four. So I have blocked off this bit here. Um, but again, you don't really get many husks coming this way. And that's partly to protect the uh, drop amp as well. But um, you get quite a number of husks coming down here and then they get pushed back with the drop traps and the launchers. Uh, you will also get a number of husks coming up the middle. Um, and you'll get a few husks coming down the, the side and mostly kind of flingers and stuff and they'll come through here so I have a few traps through here as well. I do have anti airs but I, I, they never get triggered so I should probably just destroy them. Um, yeah so I have variously managed to block off this side and I've managed to block off this middle bit and I've managed to block off this side at different points so um, but I, I've ended up keeping it open because I just find it causes less trouble that way if I have three different entrances. And also because this is the only spawn for the um, uh, for the west side amp, then it gets hit a lot of times and it, it can really affect your trap durability. Um, so, you know, particularly if you struggle for trap durability, then keeping as many sides open as possible means you're going to get husks essentially splitting into three groups and walking through rather than your traps, you know, because at one point I had that side blocked off and that side blocked off. So literally everybody was coming up here and the traps were running out really quickly, even with my very good durability. Um, so, yeah, I'd recommend on this side keeping all the pathways open. So I forgot to say where the spawns actually were. They kind of run from here all the way across to about here. Um, and again, they can shift a little bit left to right, but it doesn't particularly affect um, anything because they're mostly on a level. Um, so let's go on to the drop amp. And this is the fourth spawn that everybody has, which is drop amp west. Um, and basically your husks mostly spawn around here, ranging from about here, uh, here to, to there. Um, very occasionally you'll get ones that spawn slightly lower and you will frequently, maybe every second time, get a spawn up here. So let's think of this place first. Um, essentially, I have these launchers to basically the husk spawn and the launchers push them off. And then I have dance traps with heels as the sixth perk to just stop them from breaking through this wall here. But occasionally you get a smasher. So launchers will impact smashers, but they're not enough to push them all the way off, uh, which means the smasher will break through this wall here. But that's OK, <laughs> because I've factored that into my tunnels. And um, it will walk down to here. And as you can see, there are two tiles which are open. So the smasher has to pass through one of them to get to my amp. So inevitably, it will come here. And then, you know, these are high damage broadsides and then it will get gassed here. So I've only had that once or twice where the smasher has basically spawned up there. It doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. So just make sure you keep the tunnels open for that reason. But the majority of husks come up this side and get hit by these drop traps. Um, and you'll see I've got um, I've got these little things to try and get them to walk. So they're going to get hit by the dance traps. I don't know whether they work very well or not, but I don't get propane blowing them up, which is the important thing. So. Um, and then here, uh, I some husks will come up this way. Now, I, um, if you watch my full length video, actually this bit looks slightly different because I realized during that video that I had a launcher back here, but no husk was stepping near it at all. So um, basically I put this, this sound wall here and then I sort of forced the husks to walk over the spike and to get hit. And um, I could have put the seeding electric one tile high. It does better damage one tile high. But um, it also can be a target for lobbers sometimes. So um, I just find it's easier to keep it up there with the others. Um, but yeah, so the, the husks come up here. They get thrown back by the, by the drop traps and so on. Same principle all around. So those are the four uh, spawns that are, are shared by everybody. Now, there are two spawns that everybody will have at least one of. And I have both. <laughs> so let's look at those. Um, and that's because I've placed D Hill. So if you place D Hill, you will also have both these spawns. Um, this is the drop amp scythe. And basically the husks spawn all the way along here. Most of them just spawn in this area here. You will get a few that spawn up here. And very occasionally you will get one or two that spawn right up here. 
So again, don't take your tunnels all the way out to here, because if you take them like this, if you have them there, then the husks can just literally walk on top of them and they spawn up the top. Um, so as you can see, I've blocked off this bit here. And for the most part, this seems to work. Occasionally, you get a husk that weirdly gets trapped in it. But um, I don't have many problems with this block off. And, you know, just in case they accidentally do bash through, then this encourages them just to walk through these tunnels here, this empty space. So, but the most of them come up this way. They go through the dance and then they get thrown back by the drops and so on. Um, and then a few of them will come around this way. I had quite a lot of trouble with propanes here um, on the video run, so I added in some more dance traps just um, so that the propanes wouldn't keep blowing up stuff. Uh, yeah, but this is a longer route. What I find is that you get smashers come this way, and you if you if the mini boss spawns, the mini boss will come this way. I don't know why. Um, but yes, yeah, so this little section here is just to kill smashers on the mini boss. Uh, yeah, so that is the drop amp scythe. Next, we have the dip amp scythe. So if, as I said, if you've placed, um, okay, so actually just to recap, <laughs> drop amp scythe you'll get if you've placed D hill or if you've placed D field. Uh, dip amp scythe you'll get if you've placed D hill or if you've placed D mine. You won't get it if you've placed D field because this is D field. Um, so basically the husks spawn from here across to here. This is a really easy spawn. There's no weird uh, bits up and down. Sometimes you'll get a few that spawn up here. And one time, one time I had a husk spawn up here, which is why we have these darts. <laughs> because, um, yeah, they kind of, yeah, the ones that spawn here sometimes will try and break through. This is why we have these wall spikes. Um, but generally most husks will just spawn down here and then come up this way um, and again we've got our usual combo my favorite launchers and drop traps and so on um, so you can keep this bit open and let it join up with that tunnel but I find it easier to close it up and the husks do not bash on it at all um, and then again you'll get a few that come up this way in particular if you get the mini boss on dip amp scythe then the mini boss comes up this way which is why I trapped this way because I had it blocked off but the mini boss kept bashing through it so um, yeah that is dip amp scythe it is not super complicated let's go on now to think about some of the optional uh, spawns so it might be that you have well it will be that you only have a couple of these spawns so let's think first about D hill D hill is um, has two spawns, one to the east, one to the south. So um, as you can see, my amp D is way over trapped. This is just because of all the war games modifiers that it gets. Um, so I find in the east, they kind of spawn from around about this, this whole bit. Um, some are a bit further back, but in general, you don't get any that spawn further nor um, north of this bit. I do have block offs there just in case. Um, but I haven't ever had a situation where husks have tried to go down that way. Uh, the majority come up this way and get hit here. What I would say is that this this section of tiles is very often blown up in hot spots, um, which is why I added these two. They are basically my fail safe in case this whole lot gets blown up during hot spots and then this remains and it can still kill everybody. Um, there is a bit under there, which I've blocked off all of it. Uh, let's see if we can get through the tank early, but you can look on your own. Then you get some that come up this way here uh, and come this way here. And then uh, we some of them will occasionally come all the way around, but that's why I have the two tunnels joining up. So this is a, uh, the D Hill South. They spawn sometimes around here. Uh, but sometimes they just spawn up here. So you get a lot of attacks up this way and a few will be uh, coming up this way. And there is a middle pathway. I've blocked that off. Um, and again, I don't really find many issues with it being blocked off. The only issue is that all the war games modifiers destroy it and stuff. Um, 
So yeah, that is the D amp pill. As I mentioned, it is way over trapped, but that is just to accommodate for the fact that so many of these tiles will get blown up by different war games modifiers. So, so let's talk briefly about the um, the other two D uh, amp possibles. And obviously, I haven't placed these amps, so I can't show you my trapping for them. But I can show you where the spawns are and uh, talk a little bit about some of the challenges of them. So this is D mine. Um, and basically it has three spawns uh, and one of them is a, an annoying cross spawn which I'll get to but we'll start with the, the simplest of them. Uh, the west spawn for D-mine, it spawns all the way over here um, and it up here so obviously if you had D-mine you wouldn't have these things here they would just get broken up so you, you can spawn all the way from here and most of them are spawning down here to about here. Um, so it's a pretty simple spawn and as you can see most of them are going up so I probably recommend just some drop trap and launcher situation round right about here and then you'll be sorted and just block off that way. Or you could if you wanted to have some fun you could put some more launchers along this side and uh, ping the husks off them uh, just for enjoyment. Um, the south spawn it spawns all the way down here. Um, from about here and then all the way across uh, to here. So I, th I believe the majority of them are going to be coming up through this section and through this section here. Um, so again, you know, nice drop trap situation will sort you out. Final spawn for D mine is the E spawn and this is a really annoying spawn and so if you haven't yet placed your D amp it's the main reason I would not advise placing D in the mine because this is what's called a cross spawn. So if you place D mine you will still have this south spawn for the dip amp but you will also share it with the um, east spawn for the mine amp and the husks can spawn all the way up to here so they can destroy your tunnels. Um, and across to here. Obviously the ones that are spawning in this side, they're not going to be so problematic, but the ones that are spawning over here, potentially that will burst some of these tiles if you have them. And apparently you can get a random spawn up here, which obviously would burst these tiles too. And then remember, because D is the one hit by all the modifiers, you can get a tornado going through all of these, so destroying your, your dip amp defenses as well. So it's an annoying spawn, I wouldn't recommend placing it, but um, what you're going to find is the husk probably going to try and come down this way to get to the, um, the D mine and also down th this way. Um, downhill approaches are also annoying to trap, you have to be a little bit more proactive in what you block off uh, to do that. Right. So this is the D, D field amp and the D field amp will have three possible spawns, but it also cuts off one spawn, which is the south spawn to the dip amp. So um, even though technically this is a cross spawn uh, down here, the D field amp west, it's not as problematic as the cross spawn to, uh, th that's up on the field itself because um, it doesn't tend to break as many traps. But if, uh, so you can have husks spawning anywhere from here, so you would have to retrap this side, you couldn't have the approach like I do. Um, and kind of behind, this, uh, this natural amp area all the way across to over here. So they'll all be on a level, but they can range from here right over to my traps there. So probably if I'd placed the D field, I would have blocked off this pathway. As I said, sometimes you do get the mini boss trying to get up it, but I don't think that would be too much of a problem. Um, then the, uh, the second spawn to the D field, and also they're gonna be coming up this way here. So you can just push them back with drop traps and it will be fine. Uh, the second spawn is on the south, and basically the husks spawn here um, along the top of this area, and then they can also spawn down at the bottom of this area. They don't spawn on the area itself. Um, so again, you know, they're going to be all be trying to co mostly come up this way to the amp, and again, that's, that'll be quite easy to trap. The final approach is up where my D hill amp is placed. So they will spawn um, from from about here, again, around the back of the D hill amp and all the way across to here. So, um, you know, it's a downhill spawn where the husks are coming downhill to the amp, 
So again, you'll need to block off a few more areas, funnel them a little bit, but it shouldn't be too problematic uh, to do that. And that is the D field. Um, so this is the end of my guide to stonewood endurance. As I mentioned at the beginning, there will be more supplementary videos to come, so watch out for those in the coming weeks. Um, and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do subscribe for more videos from me.